Yeah, I'm no. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I'm extremely excited to be here. Uh, make my first webinar for Linux Foundation here. So as said, uh, we're going to talk today about uh, inside Kubernetes outside the box and gaining visibility into the whole platform, hopefully your platform um, with uh, Crossplane. Um, um, just a little bit as a starter, um, as said, I'm actually at Upbound and we help organizations standardize on a single point of control and visibility for infrastructure and uh, applications across multiple clouds and platforms. Um, we are obviously the company behind Crossplane, right? So this is our popular open source CNCF project and Upbound is uh, the commercial product that we build it around Crossplane and that really leverages the power of control plane at scale. Um, a little bit about myself. So as said, currently working as principal solution architect. Um, I'm deeply involved in Crossplane ecosystem. Um, I am regular contributor to Crossplane, but also maintainer for various providers in the ecosystem. And um, I have uh, many experience in enterprise environments um, for different uh, industries, means financial services, telco industry, and railways. Um, normally, I was helping these companies uh, to bring their private data center services to public cloud, helping to refresh the infrastructure, building a platform, um, and also adopt a lot of pre-existing services to the platforms, means firewall services, um, ITSM systems, uh, source control systems, whatever you need to operate a platform and enterprise environments, right? And yeah, now started upbound and um, helping the uh, customers around um, their platform journey. So um, we're going to talk a little bit about first about pl platforms, what it is in general, and then we're jumping into visibility, observability, monitoring part of this talk. So in general, for me, a platform is an environment um, that abstracts the underlying com complexity of your applications, right? and infrastructure. And um, this is normally consumed by all of your um, application engineers, um, DevOps engineers, whatever you name it um, in your company. And um, what basically happened with all of the engineers, normally they need to take care here um, for standardization in your company, right? So they need to implement some kind of policies. They need to implement some kind of security guardrails. They need to be aware of costs. So for up and down scaling um, for your infrastructure, um, some in, at, at some point you are starting the discussion of what is a developer self-service on top of my platform? Um, is it only an API? Is it in web front and whatever? Um, then um, you touching at some point um, the observability and monitoring part. And what I learned in the past is that normally you're building a platform and um, the last thing in general is observability and monitoring. Um, directly before production, there's something like, oh, we need to implement um, observability and monitoring. Um, and then when your platform is um, in, the, in, in the company, well well known, um, then normally the discussion starts with multi-cloud vendors, but uh, overall in this area, your platform engineers, um, they need to make their day-to-day -day business um, on this platform and they need to enforce in best practices and the controls consistently across the entire organization um, in your platform. When it comes to platforms, what we see the last years is that a lot of companies starting first standardizing um, their platform on Kubernetes um, because Kubernetes by itself is there's a lot of standardization inside, right? So you get API abstraction um, to run your workloads uh, on a Kubernetes control plane. Um, and um, it hides a lot of complexity uh, in general when you're using this kind of platform, right? But as it is, um, you not only have this Kubernetes control plane, you have, have a lot of more things and in infrastructure in your uh, public clouds or in your private clouds, right? So for example, you have infrastructure in AWS, you have some kind of identity management, for example, in Azure cloud and all the things you need to do behind the scenes, right? So um, to make it 
smooth for the uh, consumers from your platform. And you have a lot of more interaction interfaces uh, in front of your APIs with some kind of uh, GitOps toolings, uh, front ends, and whatever you want to uh, put in front of your uh, Kubernetes platform. Um, but what you really want is at the end of the day, right? If someone is using your platform, you want to say, here's my API, and um, you want to hide the full complexity behind. Um, you, you don't want to say you can have here a deployment on the, on the platform in the Kubernetes cluster, but for a firewall thingy, you need to uh, create a ticket for um, something else in the identity stores. You uh, need to open an ITSM ticket, right? So you, you want to, to make this uh, uh, completely smooth and you want to make the job very easy for everyone who's participating on your platform. And um, at the end of the day, you want to have this uh, as quick as possible. And you want to have the ability also to change whatever is behind of your um, APIs, right? So if you're changing, for example, um, the firewall provider, you don't want to um, break um, the interaction with your platform. You don't want to train all your uh, platform consumers again, um, how to uh, create firewall things, for example, right? So that means um, when it comes to cross-plane, right? Um, because this is a basic thing here, it's also a control plane. Um, let's first talk about a little bit about the basics from cross-plane. Um, so whenever you add in cross-plane as your control plane in the platform, um, you will get something like an abstraction layer, right? So um, it helps you how you can create um, cloud resources in general outside of um, inside of Kubernetes to the outside. So in cross-plane ecosystem, we um, say to this abstractions uh, providers, that means with this providers, you um, extending the Kubernetes API um, for all of the resources from um, the cloud providers, and then you can start interacting with, with them. Um, the next thing what you get with Crossplane here is um, something called uh, custom abstractions, right? Um, if you're a little bit familiar with Crossplane, you will see very often something we call it composition or composable custom abstractions here, right? It's uh, on the picture here with A and B. So you can start defining your own interfaces for your control plane, your own APIs, and you can um, thinking about what kind of um, services you're gluing together um, what you offer as an API in front. Um, the next thing what you get with Crossplane is we have a generic uh, package manager. That means whenever you're building your own APIs, you can bundle it thing together. You can put it in registries. You can put it in the marketplace in, in the Crossplane ecosystem. And at the end of the day, um, what you get with this, it, it's something like an app store for your cloud, right? So that means with Crossplane, you can install um, these kind of packages in your control plane. You can directly create infrastructure out of it with a small configuration about your credentials, but then um, create the infrastructure and everything is live and you have the first thing deployed. And um, this is normally the starting of uh, building your own platform, right? So if it all comes together and you guys want to build a platform um, in your company, really start building your platform using a control plane, right? So like the large um, cloud companies, um, AWS, Microsoft, Google, all they're using control planes the last years behind the scenes, right? So basically when you start interacting with these uh, cloud companies, um, you're leveraging them, there are control planes. Um, and whenever we are talking from our control plane with them, we're also leveraging their control planes. And why not? Um, giving all the benefits from a control plan to your company when you building um, a control a platform um, in your own company, right? So um, when we're checking a little bit in the past when everything was started, right? So it's uh, a few, few years ago, perhaps before my time, right? So um, the way back, uh, the days uh, we all doing scripting, right? So configuration was sort of comparative. Um, so a lot of things you need to do, you need to hand over some kind of um, introduction, how to uh, run infrastructure, a lot of things, right? The next cool part, which started then was infrastructure as code, as an error. So like with Ansible and Chef, I know from the past when I was sitting in my first Chef uh, training, how, how easy it was to um, 
install operating system, do a few uh, configuration from our organization and put the first HTTP server on it. And then it was really a feeling that we are really, really fast to develop or to bring new infrastructure out to the wild. Um, but then um, you get a lot of hassle around. So with uh, drifts from infrastructure, I don't know, other engineers locked into your machines. Um, you change something and you had the problem um, to restart again. So you need to invest a lot of time um, to think about what does it mean. Um, when we're looking at uh, today, I would say, um, we see that uh, the, the era of control planes started a few years ago. So um, you can see um, this is really, this was really popularized by the public cloud providers, as I said, but also from Kubernetes by self, right? And um, what you get in, at the end of the day, you get something um, called declarative APIs. Um, the cool part is self-service APIs. That means you can offer this in your platform to your um, consumers. Um, what you also give get, uh, what you also know from Kubernetes is uh, something called reconciliation, right? So um, for example, if you remove a pod, a deployment will create a pod again. And the cool part with the control plane, you get this for your infrastructure. So, and um, on top of this, if there's a drift, for example, I don't know, um, in one of the cloud providers, someone changed um, a parameter for your infrastructure, then the reconciliation will find us out, uh, correct the drift, and everything is uh, again uh, under your control, right? And then it's also very easy to, day, to do day two operations here with a um, control plan, right? Um, so we talked now a little bit about platform and cross plane and the advantages to get having a, con a cross plane powered control plan, right? So um, we can start jumping a little bit um, to the interesting part of the talk. So the platform visibility with observability, metrics, monitoring, whatever um, you can think of and what is really essential for your platform if you start building it and really start building it with us and not after, right? So we will talk about this. Um, so the first question is what happens with your platform without observability? And I know this from the past. I saw this very oft, often that uh, we start building platforms without observability parts. And at some time, I don't know, one week before production, um, it turns out uh, we need something called observability, metrics, monitoring, um, something like this, and as fast as possible because we want to go um, to production. So what you first see is um, when you go to production without it, you will see something like this. Look at all those broken tables in production, right? And um, <laughs> if, you, if, if you have a chance to look, um, this is really time consuming now, right? Because you don't have an idea when you, where you want to start. At the cloud provider, at your control plan, at your platform, at the application. Um, so um, this, took, this took you a lot of time, right? So, um, and the sentence also, um, it really shows us why we need observability in platform engineering and really at the beginning of building a platform, right? Because um, it, is, it is like a, a warning sign, right? So um, it's telling us that we have big problems because we can't see what's going on in our platform. So um, the first thing when we're implementing um, some kind of uh, visibility in the platform, we need something called spotting problems early, right? So we need a good observability overall. Um, we, need it, we need this because we need to find and fix specific problems before they get worse, right? So if it's now only one table in production or one database in production, it's fine. But what, what, what you want to do if it's all the databases in production um, for across your customers on top of the platform, right? So um, it's even better to know issues before they start causing real trouble for you. Um, the next thing is um, we need to understand a little bit why things break, right? So the observability or uh, the, the systems, um, they need to help us to figure out why these tables are broken in the first place, right? Was it a config change um, on, your, on our control plane level? Was it something um, in the um, public cloud environment, for example, or is it something um, from our software, so a glitch, um, is it too much traffic on the databases, something like this, 
we need um, help to fix the things right away, right? Um, and if you're talking about fixing things fast, um, we need um, really um, some kind of observability to find and solve the problems quickly, right? Again, uh, this is super important uh, because in a production environment where every minute counts, this is this is uh, really needed. Because when I was working for financial services, for example, there's some kind of 15 minutes and then your banking authorities will start going crazy. That means um, you, you really need this. Otherwise, um, you're lost uh, uh, between all of your um, things you uh, offer on your platform. Yeah, and then also, um, really, you need this for learning and getting better, right? So um, when something goes wrong, um, the observability tools need to help you to find and solve the problem quickly, but you can also go in the back, really find out the spot when this happens. And when it happens, then, um, yeah, checking it out, make it better, make your platform stronger and more reliable for the future, right? Fixing the problems again. Um, and you will see this really, this really helps you, right? So if you're looking again at this, look at all those broken tables in production, it's really a call to action for uh, the platform engineers in your company, right? It highlights the critical role of observability and it's not just maintaining the current state of your platform, um, but in the shape of the future resilience efficiency you need uh, in your platform, right? So because without observability, right, your platform engineering team is uh, often left in the dark completely, reacting um, to the issues instead of uh, preventing them uh, which can lead to cycles of continuous firefighting, operational inefficiencies. So you will you will see um, if 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 you invest time in this observability visibility part, um, you free them and um, they can innovate on your platform instead of firefighting um, for all of these uh, issues which can occur on your platform, right? So, and um, yeah, I really like this sentence um, if you're checking a little bit for observability and that, that's that's the reason why I'm really thinking about observability needs to be part of a control plan, right? So observability is a measure of how well internal states of a system can be inferred from knowledge of its external outputs, right? So um, let's basically, take two things together, right? I just talked about cross-plane as a control plane, and I talked about we need something for observability, visibility, and um, let's see how we can stitch this together, right? And how um, we really solve some of the um, pain points, problems, and challenges in the platform engineering space, right? So um, what we get when we stitch this all together, we essentially get a control plane, um, you can see the control plane here on the uh, right side. And when we get this um, control plane, um, we can power the control plane with visibility. And um, then we um, get some advantages here, um, only to name a few of them. So you can reduce complexity, you can ensure consistency, enable portability, easy leverage and secure operations. Um, if you check what kind of um, services you're normally running around your control plane, right? So you're starting normally with something like a Git system, CI, CD, you're adding like platform front ends, you're using GitOps systems, you're using authentication authorization internally, you need something for secrets management, you need policy engines, you need uh, continu continuity management for uh, backup and restore. But really the important point here is for all of the things in your control plane, you need monitoring and observability uh, per default uh, enabled for your uh, platform owners, uh, for your platform users, consumers, right? So um, as mentioned, really building your platform only with the control plan and not without, um, you get the ability to create custom APIs and interfaces with the control plan, right? And overall this reduces the whole complexity you see here on the right side, right? Because um, you can really ensure that only the things you want is are the things that you are really running in your control plane and in your platform, right? Um, when you enable portability, um, it doesn't matter if this Kubernetes cluster, for example, is running in the cloud provider A or B, um, you can, you can um, enable it um, and can change it whatever you want because you're hiding the full complexity behind of your APIs, right? Um, the next thing is easy leverage. That means you don't need to start building the whole platform for your own, right? 
there's a lot of things pre-created in the uh, in the ecosystem, right? So there's a marketplace you can pull in a lot of predefined platform references for Kubernetes clusters for networks. Um, it doesn't matter in which um, kind of um, public public cloud you're running, and you can think about um, is this what my uh, is this what you what my company needs, and if yes, use it and then start adopting it, right? And um, this really saves you the bootstrapping time. And at the end of the day, you're really fast fast, and you have a faster time to market for your organization, for your company. Um, but overall, this full thing here, right? So the reconciliation is the really interesting part here. So when we orchestrated the whole platform here, right? Um, it's a really complicated pipeline at the end of the day, right? So many things to take care of, right? I don't know, the Git system needs to be first and the GitOps system needs to kick in. You need secret management, then the policy needs to kick in. And after a while, uh, your backup needs to be run on this platform. Um, and all the things together, uh, you want to operate on top of this secure and efficient, right? This is what uh, normally uh, the idea is of a platform. So really, if you're leveraging a control plane here, um, you can manage your platform over the entire life cycle, right? And this is the huge advantage what you get here when you're using a control plane powered by a cross plane. So let's um, jump in a little bit of more detail. So let's say um, what we talked about um, custom APIs and interfaces, right? So platforms really require abstractions to hide the underlying uh, complexity from your customers. Uh, for the platform, right? So because at the end of the day, it creates a more intuitive experience for them. And um, also we need to make it as simple as possible. As you can see here on the right side, um, we created here um, an API for a bucket, right? It's a bucket from a company in this case. Um, it's in a region and we have an we have an uh, Boolean here for observability if you want to have a true or false. The idea behind is um, if you're running in development environments, perhaps you don't want to um, enable full observability because you're trying something out, right? But what happened in the background is when we're composing this here now together from the managed resource perspective, we're creating, for example, an S3 bucket in, uh, pro uh, in the cloud provider, right? But what you also can do automatically with it, we can create an alert rule in your Prometheus alert manager, right? Um, and we can um, add some defaults right and um, the next thing what we can uh, compose is an um, escalation policy for your pager duty what you're using in the company right and all the things here together it, it makes it really really easy um, if you're doing it behind your api because uh, that's really simplifying the access to observability features in your uh, company and um, with the cross-plane CRDs and the composition, you really this really enables um, not only the platform builders, but everyone who's using the platform that you have the unique APIs and you really support observability and metrics and so on and so forth um, over your entire control plane because you can do it for every resource if you want, if someone is creating these resources, right? So again, this very simple example here, it shows us to leverage the composition and the custom API, right? And we can really, uh, again, here hiding the full complexity. No one needs to understand how to create an alert rule in the, in the uh, Prometheus alert manager. No one needs to understand uh, how to create a policy uh, in a page duty environment, right? Because this is what the platform builders can do for you. And you're only the user of uh, this at the end of the day. Um, when we're talking about configurations, so um, thinking about observability system in general, they're coming with uh, particular settings for data sources, dashboards, alerts. And uh, if you want to support it for your users on your platform, um, you can include this fundamental set of these features in every API, as I said, right? And you can have this um, through your entire control plane. Um, if you check, if you, if you see this here on the right side, right? Um, we can define exactly an alert rule here. Um, this kind of alert rule is a custom API, as you can see, um, and we can use this alert rule then for every bucket which is created um, in our control plane. And um, this is really extremely powerful because it's like four or five input parameters and the rest is um, automatically done for you, right? So, and um, the cool part here is, um, 
the cross plane config you can use this in cross plane configurations then together we can bundle this you can ship it out you can give it to other departments in your company and um, they can directly start using it it's a clear api it's a declarative process if you're checking about abstractions right it's a, it's an next topic so um, in this example on the right side, we really just expose an internal policy API, right? So you see here the declarative uh, policy. Um, it's just giving you a little bit more of an idea how you can uh, use existing abstractions here. Um, it doesn't matter if someone is using this as uh, an, an user from your platform. If it's at the in 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 the background, if it's um, created in a uh, cloud provider A B, if it's created in a SaaS provider, if it's created in a platform as a service provider, really this this whole thing we can hide um, in our implementation in the control plane. So that means today, for example, you can create this policy in a PagerDuty environment. Tomorrow you can uh, create this in a Grafana on-call environment. It really doesn't matter, and you can really. You can you you can be very fast to switching this whenever something in your company changed, right? And um, I really like this uh, this hiding of the underlying complexity for um, the normal users of your platform, right? So <clears throat> that's that's a really plus point here. Um, the next thing, and um, this is last but not least, but this is really um, in 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 really important point because. Um, how we keep now all the things uh, together, right? How we managing the whole life cycle of all the pieces we stitching together. Remember the picture what I showed you, right? Um, so this is an extremely challenging problem normally um, because all the different components, they need to work together. You have different cloud APIs, you have different SaaS providers, you have different PaaS providers. And um, what comes on top of it it, it sounds easy, but at the end it is not, is what is running in your Kubernetes cluster, because inside your Kubernetes cluster, you can running thousands of services, right? And you can stitch other services together, um, if you remember the CNCF landscape, right? So at the end, what you want um, in the whole platform, you build it, um, you want um, the overview of everything in your uh, specific uh, platform, right? So really you require a control plane, and then you constantly um, orchestrate um, all the necessary resources, right? So you can deploy them as needed. You can guarantee their continuous availability. You can continuously reconcile their state to ensure alignment of your control plane requirements, right? And in case of drifts, um, cross plane will persistently reconcile your resource and um, maintain consistent management overall. And um, yeah, what you can see here, um, Crossplane is also managing then, for example, your observability system and how this can look like. Um, we will see in a small demo now. So I will stop my presentation and um, I will show you now a little bit of a control plane. Um, let's have a look how it looks like normally with Crossplane. So um, I'm here connected to a control plane. Um, and what we're using here in this control plane, as I said before, um, use pre-existing platform references. So we can say, um, give us um, the configurations I installed in this uh, control plane. So you will see um, we're using a predefined configuration for an AWS network here. We're using predefined configuration for an AWS EKS cluster. We're using some for um, IAM roles for Kubernetes service accounts. And we're using one for our database uh, because we want to find out why the databases uh, in production have trouble with their tables, right? And all this is uh, bundled here together in my platform API. And uh, to give you an overview what that means, um, because I'm using a abstracted API here, um, we can use the Kubernetes uh, CTL, the kubectl command. So let's uh, make kubectl get X network. Um, we will see, okay, cool. It's very easy. It's a network created here. Um, if we want to look a little bit deeper, um, we can use the new nicely command from uh, Crossplane because this control plane is backed by Crossplane. Um, we can see here after a few seconds, what kind of resources are behind my API. And then you see now the magic, what happens if you create your own API in your control plane, right? So a bunch of resources are really here created. But also, if we're hiding the complexity, we need deep insights 
why, for example, my my um, abstraction is uh, not ready, not synced? Which kind of resource is missing? Which kind of resource has trouble at the moment, right? So, um, and we can do the same thing with um, an EKS cluster. So it's the same thing, get X EKS. So you will see cool, some kind of EKS cluster is deployed. We can use the same thing, um, better trace, um, the EKS cluster now, and then you will see, cool, there's a bunch of resources for a very basic EKS cluster, EKS cluster, add-ons, a little bit OIDC provider, a few roles in AWS, that's it, right? And you can see they have they have um, other timings for readiness, right? So perhaps an IAM role is faster than a full EKS cluster in AWS, and all the things together you need to investigate later in your observability systems, right? So, and um, the idea to make it very, very easy in companies is to use some kind of um, observability uh, systems, monitoring systems, and uh, make this um, really centralized around your platform, right? So what you, what you will see is um, we're using here a um, centralized Prometheus. So we can say, give us the centralized Prometheus. In this case, it's a managed uh, Prometheus and AWS. Um, you see it's available and we will have something like in uh, managed Grafana. Um, that's the cool part. And um, what we also can do with our control plane now is something like give us, for example, um, create us folders in, uh, in Grafana because we want to uh, organize our internal users um, on in, in this Grafana, for example. Normally companies, they have something like um, tenant onboardings, customer onboardings, um, and that means um, <clears throat> if you have this, you can include, for example, Grafana folders in your onboarding process, then it is clear for them, they get access to these folders. And then the next thing would be you need dashboards, right? And a dashboards now can, could be really something when, you uh, when you're provisioning uh, a database, why not provisioning automatically um, for this uh, specific tenant, customer, user, um, also Grafana dashboards, right? So, um, that's 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 the thing what we need need to think about when we're creating our API abstraction, right? So um let's have a look. Um we also created an SSQL instance instance. Um it's the only thing, and behind my implementation of an SQL instance now, um we're creating an AWS and RDS instance, for example, we're creating something called uh DB subnets group, but we also creating for this AW uh, for this RDS instance then in um, Grafana dashboard. And we also creating perhaps something like an SQL day exporter that we get insights from um, the database by self. And uh, we can now have a look how this looks like before we going into Grafana. Let's have a look how our uh, EKS cluster looks like. Um, so whenever we provisioning now new clusters, this new cluster is connected to our centralized uh, Prometheus installation. So we can say, let's have an overview of the pods, what we're running here. So the really cool part is, yes, you see in the specific Kubernetes cluster, EKS here, um, we're running here Prometheus. But the cool part is this Prometheus is only here to remote write, right? So this Prometheus is not persisting data. It's remote writing the data in a managed offering. And uh, for demo purpose, I installed here some cross-plane and providers and um, also using a service called Xmetric. It's available in cross-plane community. And with Xmetrics, you get a lot of metrics from uh, composites, managed resources. Um, we can have a look how this looks like in uh, the Grafana environment then. So, and you will also see, I created a database. Um, it's called Hakri LF demo. And you will see I created this um, database in the default namespace. And what automatically happens here is that the MySQL exporter was created automatically. And this SQL exporter is connected to the database because I have from Crossplan the ability to use a connection secret. So I get username and password. And if I use this together, I can uh, instruct the SQL exporter to generate uh, metrics for me. Um, from this database inside. So, and then I can really combine everything together. Um, so now let's have a look um, here um, in my dashboards, right? So um, I prepared this um, here because otherwise I need to log in. Um, it's a managed uh, Grafana again, and I need to log in via my company credentials here. 
um, you get this out of the box. So um, what you see here now is um, really cool because you see metrics from the database, but you see also metrics from cross plane, from your control plane, right? So, and what you can see here, which is really interesting, if you're checking the graph here, you see that my um, XR from my SQL instance was uh, not ready for, uh, for a specific time, but we will see here that it reached ready at some point. Um, if you're looking to the right in the managed resources uh, graph, you will see that the managed resources was uh, ready a few seconds before. And this is expected when, for example, uh, we updating some kind of input parameters from the database, right? Because the database then um, gets one time um, not synced, it is synced, and then it's not ready, perhaps because the database needs a reboot. And we can have a deeper look here. What's what's going on? Uh, is it is the problem here because my database is not reachable because uh, at the moment there's an upgrade running or what it is? Um, but what we see here also is from inside the uh, SQL database, we see, okay, the uptime is more than 10 hours. So there was no downtime from this upgrade pro process here, perhaps. But you can also like very deep inside, you can check your performance schemas, whatever you want. And this is what you can offer per default whenever someone is creating databases from your uh, control plan, right? So you will also see some, some rates for time to reconcile here for the claim. You will see that, that we have a general controller reconciliation reconcile times uh, for the composite and you will also like get insights if for example the provider which is uh, responsible for talking with the aws api had some trouble because of restarts whatever right so this gives you a little bit more um ideas what's going on with your database and really this is a basic example but if you're rolling this out more and more in your organization in your company then you can create really great overviews you can iterate on top of it you can create your alerts you can create your escalation policies you can think of uh, specific slo sli implementations from all the things you get here right um, if you're talking a little bit um, or checking a little bit what we also get from this X metrics, what I said to you, um, we, or in general, what we get from, from uh, cross-plane uh, metric endpoints, you will see we get, we get some information of histograms, we get right uh, time for reconcile in general for a lot of um, um, endpoints, so managed resources, uh, composites, whatever. Um, we get controller reconcile time, so you can have a look how it looks like. And what I learned in the past, it's also very interesting to uh, monitor or to have metrics for your pods in general, because it's uh, the control plane itself and cross plane is running on the Kubernetes control plane. And as you know, um, it's expected to be restarted, but um, you, can, you can then uh, have a look was there something like a rescheduling of my whole infrastructure under my control planes? Is that the reason why, for example, a database took a lot of more to provision that the upgrade was stuck, whatever? All the things you can get out of this metrics here, right? Um, you can also like monitor what kind of uh, additional resources we're creating in the clusters in the API servers. If the API server is under pressure because of, I don't know, 10,000 of uh, custom resources here. And it's also great to check CPU and memory usage because sometimes you get throttled and then um, a lot of things go on um, very, very slow and um, all the things you can um, have a look at. Um, when we're checking what's what's uh, what's happening in, in our Prometheus here, because we're getting this uh, metrics, as I said, uh, from uh, from a re so we're writing from uh, the EKS Prometheus to a remote sign here. Um, we will get here from all the clusters we provisioned and all the metrics aggregated here. So that means, um, for example, for RDS, right, you get the information when it gets created, the info, the labels, when it's ready. When it when was the ready time? Um, it since when? Um, is it synced? Is it unsynced? All the things what you normally get from um, the status from an individual resource and cross plane you can uh, find in your uh, Prometheus installation in this case. So um, this is this is the really cool part, and you can um, offer this as a service in your platform. So um, this was a little bit uh, what I wanted to show you here. Um, if you if you want to uh, build this together, um, we will have a look how this looks like. Um, so um, so very quickly wrapping this up, right? 
as I mentioned, um, <clears throat> I worked at Upbound, and you know, Upbound is um, really all about uh, control planes at scale. It's easy and efficiently um, when you're using them, and we are behind the open source CNCF project Crossplane, right? So we created a commercial product called Upbound, um, and this uh, Upbound product that makes it really easy um, for you to run and operate control planes, right, at a high scale. So not only limited to one control plane, you can uh, run hundreds and thousands of control planes if you want, as I said, at high scale. Um, if you're checking here a little bit about the Upbound platform itself, um, that means... Um, <clears throat> Um, you can you can use Upon today to build everything from internal uh, developer platforms, as I said, right? If you have AI developers, use the plat use this uh, use Upbound. If you want to create observability platforms overall, use Upbound. If you have data pipelines, use Upbound. Whatever it doesn't matter, right? So um, in the very core of the of the of the offering, what we have here, yes, we're running cross plane control planes. But what we're doing here, we're managing the control planes for you and scaling this. Um, and they are reliable for you, right? Um, what we're also doing is like we are creating so plugin systems for, for Git system, um, source control systems, but also we have a story around monitoring and security stuff for uh, the control planes in general. So um, that means it's really up to you if you put more things together in a control plane environment, that means uh, you the more things um, are under continuous reconcile and at the end of the day, you can um, orchestrate everything in your control plan. But again, the interesting part here is your uh, visible observability part between inside the box and outside the box, right? You need the visibility, what's going on in your platform. If it's from your control plan, is it from the outside to find it really fast and that you can iterate on it to fix it uh, in your platform to um, really uh, create platforms that someone wants to use. So um, the last thing I see, um, there was some kind of questions. For example, if you share the repository for the code for the demo, yes, we have some kind of uh, reference platforms here. As you can see, um, I used one for cluster as a service. Really, um, if you want to use it for orchestrate Kubernetes cluster as a service across your environment, right? So ensuring seamless, scalable, centralized management for your containerized application alongside your infrastructure. Have a look there. You can also like starting um, directly in Upbound to iterate on this. Um, there's an in, there's an idea how to run observability in a single control plane. Um, the idea what I showed you today was more like what you're doing with um, control planes. If you have hundreds of control planes with a centralized uh, observability system, uh, then you can have a look here in our um, configuration for observability. And I think I'm good in time. So um, that means I would want to wrap this up and um, we can have the last minutes here now for Q&A. If you have some questions, um, feel free to ask. I try to answer them. Thank you, everyone. So let me check. I see only the one open question. Uh, share the repository of the code. Yeah, it's it's part of um, all the platform references, as I said, right? So you can have a look. Um, and um, that's what we uh, assemble together. So all the all the parts are available in the um, open source communities. <clears throat> So I don't see any more questions here. Um, I don't know if someone else is seeing something. Ah, okay. Okay, I see now uh, one question. So what would be the best link to get started with XRDs? Um, yes, um, today it's a little bit uh, not so easy to start creating these XRDs. I think the CrossFit community is working on this a little bit more, but um, what I normally doing for XRDs is um, looking at the reference platform implementations. And then um, the other good um, starting point is um, checking open API schemas because at the end of the day, it's open API. And um, this, what you are creating in your in your XRDs and offering as input fields for your developers is, is open API. And so you can start inter iterating on 
um, make your platform API abstraction. I think, uh, can we get a replay of this presentation? Yeah, I think this is recorded and this will be available um, shortly after the, uh, the, um, the webinar. So there's one more question. Does Crossplane address the storage scalability issues with metrics and logging? Um, so to be to be honest, um, not per default. So you need to build around what it means um, if you have storage scalability issues with metrics and loggings. And what I learned from the past is really um, think about if you really need all tons of metrics in your systems, right? Or if it's better to filter before. Um, I know there are some um, software as a service and platform as a service um, guys outside, they're helping you to find out what kind of metrics you're really using in your dashboard and if it's possible to drop the rest. Um, so I don't know, for example, <laughs> if you if you if you if you really want to have all the metrics from a from an EC2 instance, and if you really want to see if a red LED and the data center is on or off, um, I think you can drop this metric, but it's really cost you costs you money at the end of the day, right? So you need you need to be uh, aware of this uh, storage scalability things, right? It's nothing Crossplane can sell you per default. Um, there's one more question. So is there already an implementation of Prometheus Grafana together with Loki? Um, yes, we have one available. Um, it's uh, part um, of the um, observability um, configuration we offer in the marketplace. So you can have a look uh, inside uh, this. Um, if not, um, if this is not enough, I'm also open in the Slack channels for Crossplane so I can uh, point you to the right um, sources if you need this. <clears throat> so Candice, I look a little bit in your direction. Um, I don't see any more questions at the moment. Great. If you're ready, we can go ahead and wrap things up. Yeah, I'm ready. Thanks for everybody to uh, participating in this webinar. Thanks for the questions. And as I said, I'm available in the Slack channels from Crossplane. Ping me there. Um, and the rest is up to Candice now. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Christopher, for your time today. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, as a reminder, this recording will be on the Linux Foundation's YouTube page later today. We hope you join us for future webinars and have a wonderful day. Bye.